I think it all. I think it also goes back to, in my opinion, education. Mm. And for me, it's almost like there's a fear of saying, "This is what we. This is what we were a part of. This is what we did." And there's almost like a fear of it. And and I keep coming up with the, with with the, with the. I was I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was saying, it's like having a paedophile in your house. You've got a paedophile in your house, you know that there's a paedophile in your house, but you don't want to admit it. Yeah. Mm. So that paedophile will still do whatever you want. It will only be stopped, or you'll only try and do something up until you, you say, you're a paedophile, you're in our house, you should not be should in here. Someone else there. Yeah, <laughs> you should not be here. But don't try and sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. Like, I, like I said earlier on, I if you're going to tell the truth, tell all of the truth. It's, yeah. not about, it's not about blame, it's not about saying you're bad people because you did all this. It's just about saying, this is where we came from. We, we, let's try and improve things. Let's 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 learn from what we've done. Yeah. But let's not let's not try and hide it. See, yeah. I've been a teacher for forty years, and for the whole of my life, people have said everything. The teachers should sort everything out. You know, teachers should teach kids to go to the toilet. Teachers should teach kids to do their shoelaces up. Teachers are kind of responsible for everything. And you can't be responsible for everything. There is not enough time in the day for teachers to teach everything. It's, it's parents, just it's not parents are you going to Parrington next? But what I, what I do think is important is firstly, when I first started teaching 40 years ago, there was no national curriculum. So I could teach my kids whatever I wanted. And I my first school was a, a primary school in Brent which was almost exclusively black children and so I, I base my curriculum around what they were interested in and I would ask them to bring things in from home yeah. mm -hmm. um, so that it, it, was, it was around what they wanted to learn. And the other thing that I was very careful about, as a t uh, 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 so to finish that conversation, we now have the national curriculum in place, which teachers have to stick to. Yeah. And the big problem with the national curriculum that we have, particularly the history curriculum, mm -hmm. is that all of the stuff that you have to teach mm -hmm. is all the white, centric European mm. history. Which will be checked by Ofsted, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And the, the, the interesting stuff, all of the, the slavery and stuff in India with the, the salt taxes, all of those things, they're all of the things that you can do if you... Extra if you, yeah, yeah, if you want to. Mm -hmm. But you haven't got time. No. You just haven't got time. To go into all So the only stuff that you ever get to do is, yeah. is that... that that core curriculum. Yeah. The other thing that I used to work really hard at in my classroom was making sure that the classroom that I had reflected the cultures of the children that yeah. were in there. Mm. And a lot of that was around sourcing books that had non-white faces in them. And, and 40 years ago, it was incredibly difficult to do that. Yeah, it's still quite difficult. Mm. That's yeah. exactly what I was going well, to no, say. Well, no, I'll disagree with that one. I know, it's still really, it's really, really difficult. Find. And yeah. when my, da my daughter's father is African, so she's mixed race, and when she was little, trying to find books that I could read with her that reflected who she was, I could find books about Kenya. You know, the Maasai warriors, there's hundreds of books around about that. Mm. But trying to find a book about a mixed race mm -hmm. little girl that's growing up in England, there's about three of them. And that hasn't changed very no. much yeah. in the last 30 well, years. Well, no. not a very good point. Yeah, but I, I was, uh, I'm a mental health worker in Manchester, although I live in Bolton. I, I was um, with one of my service users. Uh, and we just went in Clinton cards because I had a friend who, who was a, an African refugee and it was her daughter's birthday and I'm looking through all the cards and um, they're all blonde girls yeah, yeah. So, and uh, the assistant came over and said can I help you and I said yeah have you got a card that says happy fifth birthday with a picture of a, a little black girl on it 
and they went through it. Of course, it, I knew it was, by that point, I knew it wasn't going to be there. No, but they're going not. through all the cards. And even, even my, my uh, service user, the guy with mental health, white guy with mental health, when we came out, he said, I've never, ever thought so that that's ridiculous. Like that. well, well, what about that's the right-wing view on that, then? Because, because the right-wing view on that is that if you Google now, uh, happy English family or British family, yeah, you've got the, 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 the stereotypical cliche now, which is coming along... Um, which is which is not liked by your nationalists uh, and right wing who are not extra you know extreme right wing at all. But this is like they see it as their nationalism being um, uh, er 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 eroded bit by bit. You'll see on the TV every white girl with a family. It's got to be mixed race, either Chinese or a black husband or a, you're talking a about white wife. And, and, and everything on TV. Don't learn off Google. They're learning. Or yeah, I know, but even on the TV, every advert, right, an insurance advert, you've got the white guy that comes yeah. home to the black and missus, like, or the black missus that comes home to the white guy. So educational reasons, I don't think there's enough for... for so you think that's a good thing, to have no, mixed no. things on adverts and TV? Definitely it's a good thing, because now it's... With things, more things are getting noticed a lot more, as in five, ten years ago, you would never see... Things like that on TV. Yeah. So well, I, what about I, people like me that say, "Well, hang on, this is my country. Why shouldn't it be, it be all white people? Why should I have someone with a turban reading the news? I'm bloody British." Yeah, but they're British as well. Huh? Eh? But they're from Britain. But, they're, British but the well, difference so. is, that they have, they've got different. They're from different cultures, and some cultures clash with ours. Of course. Right. Yeah. We get back with to different this. ideas. So. So, so if you, if you've got a different, well, you've got the same culture as me. Yeah. You hate to admit at the minute with me being like this, but. Someone, let's say, from Pakistan. Yeah. You know, th they've got different views, obviously, with their religion. And that, uh, I just think it's, they've not been educated properly then. Ah, now you're as bad as me saying that, because that that, that is defamatory. That uh, you see, if I said that, if someone's upset about somebody being on TV who has got different coloured skin or looks different, then they need to educate themselves. I. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think so. you just get back to what we were saying before. What we started with, you, you only notice it if it's a person of colour. You don't yeah. why, are, why are all these white people on telly? You know, you don't... don't because it's a hard blinking country, isn't it? Pe people complain about schools where there's a majority of people from South Asia. Nobody goes to Ashley Bridge and goes, what? Where's all the, where's all the black people? Why, are all, why is there only white people yeah. in this school? Because we know why. Cause, well, you know, because the people with money that live in Ashley yeah. Bridge that live ten times longer than people that live in Great Lever. Ten, sorry, ten years longer. Yeah. They live ten years longer than people that live yeah. in Great Lever. They're the people with the money. But, and it's, so it is about telling the old story and not just picking little bits of stuff and trying to... Mm. If, if you want to know how much it's changed, I, I think you're right, it has changed, and, uh, but, it, but it can go backwards. The, the Tory party, to the credit, on Father's Day this year, put up an happy Father's Day message, and it was a black family. And the Tory, the thousands and thousands of I mean, you know, what? Why? Why do we have to watch this? Why do we have to see this? Why? What was? They, they, they do that every year, and it's the first time they had a black family. Or nobody ever said, "Why do you shoving whiteness down our face every bloody Father's Day?" Mm -hmm, yeah. Whiteness, whiteness. Nobody, you know. So, and I, I think you do have to. Yeah, but it's a predominantly story. white country. I mean, That's get, why. We, we get if it was in Vietnam, you wouldn't have a, a white British family on, would you? We, You'd have a Vietnamese family we, we on. Live, we live in a world where people are all completely different colours, and you know people have to get used to that. There was a slogan in the 1970s where, when uh, uh, black self-defence groups and anti-immigration, uh, sorry, uh, anti-deportation campaigns, and people would said, "We're here because you were there." Yeah. You know, we're here because you plundered our lands. You know, and that, that's why we've ended up here oh, and you have to nice. tell the, the whole story like, like um, Julia was saying I work in the NHS all we get now is immigrants are going to overwhelm the NHS <laughs> I, when I started work I worked in Koto which is mainly mainly um, South Asian workers some Poles and some black workers and some white workers like myself yeah. and there was this old well, I was only a teenager so everybody appeared to be old to me then <laughs> but this old West Indian guy and I always remember he always wore a suit and um, when he used to go in the pub and he'd get black this or nigger this and stuff, he'd say, hey, I was personally invited here by Enoch Powell. And they'd think, yeah. and he'd get out of his pocket, out of his suit pocket, a, a, newspaper, a Caribbean newspaper, and he'd unfold it, and there was an advert 
from Enoch Powell, Minister of Health, saying, come to Britain and help us build the NHS, yeah. help mm. us build the National Health mm. Service. Mm. Yeah. And that isn't just then. I still work in, I, I work in the health service now, and it's still run by people from across the world. Yeah. We can't, I, I work in men's health. We can't, we don't have any psychiatrists in North Manchester mm. that are actually white or were yeah. even born in Britain. Yeah. Uh, I sit in a bank, of, before lockdown, I sit in a bank of workers of uh, CPA, uh, psychiatric nurses, uh, OTs and social workers. Mm. It's all black women. Some of yeah. them were born here. Yeah. And a lot of them are from Africa. Okay. So we, you know, we, we couldn't run the NHS without people f from around the world. This idea yeah, that, that people are coming in from other countries, black people, and they're swamping the NHS. The black people still hold up the NHS to this day. We they do, run without they it. do, but I think that, I mean, when, when Rose was little, I, like, I, I remember very clearly there was a black female um, French ice skater, figure skater, who was winning lots of medals. Yeah. And I used to make Rose sit down and watch her with me because there was a black woman winning medals and, and doing really well at something. Yeah. The woman, the, there was a black woman who used to present Blue Peter, I can't remember what her name yeah. was, mm. but she played Belle in Beauty and the Beast yeah. at the Dominion theatre in London and I took Rose to see that because she saw a young black woman playing yeah. a princess in a Disney yeah. thing and, and I wanted my daughter to I wanted her to have figures, you know, someone that she could look up yeah, to yeah, inspiration, someone and, to inspire Yeah, and, and it just wasn't there no, no you know, it's great that we have all the nurses and the, mm. but but you know, black pe black people generally speaking are the cleaners and the yeah. road sweepers. Yeah. And the, There's that, very few protagonists who, you know, who are very it's, big. It's, it's but a, that, but even that's that's do. not the same I'm these days, though. You know, a bad job, but that's not the day the, the same scene these days. I mean, you've got YouTube now and all the rest of it. And, and, and a lot of, especially the music, is predominantly black. There's some really big icons there, especially from yeah. the States, isn't there? Would you say that's true or not? Yeah, definitely. A lot of artists are mainly black. Um, I mean, come on, if I tried to rap, you'd be in hysterics, wouldn't you? Can I, can I, yeah, can I, can I, I just want to finish off with the young people, child, and I'll, I'll end with you, um, if, you don't, if that's OK. But, yeah, a lot of the artists are black, and a lot of white people love black culture. They love... Yeah. to the artist and the clothes and the style. Uh -huh. um, I'd probably say a lot of maybe racist people. I've got to, no, I've got to, I've got to come in here, George. I've OK, got to, yeah, sure. I've got to come in. Sure. I'll tell you the reason why I've got to come in with this now. OK. Right, is because, obviously, anybody who knows me knows I love music. Yeah. And I've been doing this for 20 years. And there was a, a young lad came here, and um, his mum was um, some big insurance woman. She was a lovely, lovely woman, but her clients were all like, uh, I don't know if you know, no, no, Trevor Horn was one of her clients, like, no, Trevor Horn, the producer, producer um, ABC, um, Sanka Goes to Hollywood, it's a massive producer, Trevor Horn, he was out of the Boggles, you know, video, yeah. the, the radio, yeah, he was out, <laughs> a Jazzy B was another one, yeah. she had a list, so anyway, I'm, I'm going on, anyway, cut a really long story short. She said, so it's because she was, she was well to do. She said, I'll tell you what, what I'll do. She said, you pick eight of your young people. And you know, there was, there was young people from the Black Egg who came before the Black Egg who was in the farm, whatever. And she said, we're going to take these eight people to London. Chatter B's got a foundation in London, and it's, it's like, obviously, like at Ernie, but massive. Yeah. I was, you know, he's a really good friend. She was on the phone to him. I'll come down, we'll get you an hotel, blah, blah, blah. It was amazing. We all went there, I've got pictures in my house. We met Jazzy B. So to so, 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 so were ma as you know, we were massive yeah. at the time. And um, we sat in a room like this and chatted to him like with the kids. And um, we said to Jazzy, Jazzy B turned around and said, um, it's a mad country, this country. It's not like America. He said, and, and the things that we've done and, and, the, and, uh, and the success we've had has been phenomenal, but he said, you tell me, he said, in this country, because I know we were just talking then earlier about black role, role model, black pop stars and whatever. So I'm going to throw this one out at you, because when he said it to me, it shocked me. Yeah. And I thought, 
And he said to me, name me one, one black superstar from this country. One. And he said, if you look at the charts, if you go through the charts, probably from the 70s through to present day, and you check out many in the top 20, black artists and especially black influenced music in that chart, there's loads of them. But you tell me, he said, one, name me one black superstar. Kenny, Lin ask, Kenny Lynch. Yeah, Spike Milligan. Yeah, yeah. Spike Milligan was fantastic. Well, yeah, well, you name me one. So you name me one who's at a level of a Rod Stewart, a Helton John, a Paul McCartney, a Mick Jagger, yeah. and I could go on and on. David Bowie, a blah blah. I, I could go on and on and on and on. There's not been one. And do you know why? Because there's no investment in black people in this country. We're terrible. We'll have one hit, one album, and then see you later. Do you know who the most? Do you know who the most successful black artist is in this country? Ever, ever. Do you know who it is? Craig David. Craig David, and I'm not being funny. You have, who's bigger than him? Who's had more hits than Craig David in this country? It's ridiculous. But when you look at the country, when you look at the country and the influence British music has had on the world, yeah. right? And then you think to yourself, there isn't one Paul McCartney, not one Elton John, not one artist, not one that's had any kind of longevity in this country, none. That is crazy. None. And if you look, you know, as no Charles is, is pointing out, pretty much all of the black music that is in...